Welcome Walnut. I'm Lara, but you can call me Laz, your host for Walnut Wednesday. This is your reminder to be brave, be yourself, and know that you can make the world a better place just by what you decide today. Here, I'm going to share my weekly walnuttings with you on a Wednesday. Hello Walnut, it is me Laz here for another episode of Walnut Wednesday and today I'm very excited, actually it will be the last episode of 2020, so very cool. I have my friend Atom from London, hello. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How do you this introduce people? Good. You just like have to, yeah. Um, so Atom, friend. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Absolutely. Um, yep, my name is Etem. I am a filmmaker, creative, and recently published poet. And yeah, I have been filmmaking for about 10 plus years. And then probably for the past two years, I created a creative agency called Rise2. And yeah, kind of been expanding on the creative write- writing um on short films and yeah that's kind of me up to this point so we actually walnut we actually met through um our nearest and dearest kate bromley who has been on the podcast uh, 50 hundred million times so um <laughs> you've actually worked with kate right yep kate's one of my besties i've worked with her for a long long time i have um what's the what's the best way to put this i've embraced <laughs> that girl a lot she is fantastic. She's wicked. She is my yeah. She's a she supported me a lot, and yeah, she's bliss to work with. She's really really good. Yeah, I agree, Kate. We love you. Um, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um, because one of the reasons why I thought it'd be interesting to chat with you was because you've published your own book of poetry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's go, let's jump into that. What what made you feel like, because I believe, was that over over the lockdown that that kind of was birthed and created or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was. It was, well, the lockdown gave me the opportunity to essentially just think about it. To, I was writing for about a year and a half. It started off with, um, it started off with a poem called The Cover, which we turned into a short film, which Kate um, has probably mentioned. Obsessed. Um, Love that. And the, yeah, it's um, it's definitely um, what do you call it? Yeah, should definitely go see it. But the cover, it started off with the cover, and the cover was very much a metaphor for being under a safe space. It was kind of written f- with the intention of escaping, or what what happened was a kind of removing yourself from a situation, and at that time in my life it was very much in what we've kind of spoken about what it is to be a walnut and what I kind of said was that it was reaching a breaking point it was you have to break a walnut (laughs) to see what's inside and I was breaking my mold I was breaking my yeah my mind my body and it was just kind of like I was just not feeling I was so um I could feel so much and I didn't know how to communicate it. I didn't know how to receive it. And it was just a real state of vulnerability. So the cover was very much me removing myself. And then that kind of became a theme. And then I just continued writing Um, a lot of things. I just kind of, it was just vomit at one point. I just, I mentioned in the book, like um, poetry came and found me like an old friend and said, let me help you. And I guess we'll touch on this later about kind of finding your creative um, method of communicating and you never know what can kind of birth from those kind of beautiful um, moments but um, yeah that's that's how it started that's how it came about and then yeah just carried on writing um, until lockdown and then I had like a collection of poems in which decided to uh, yeah decided to publish and were you like scared were you like what the fuck am I supposed to do like I have all these beautiful words how like what what happened in the process there to make you go no oh, I'm gonna freaking make a book <laughs> like now <laughs> well it's kind of like it was kind of um like um hold on let me think about this bit 
basically I had this philosophy that it was this kind of unspoken language and I had all these poems and I sent them around and kind of shared them willingly and there was I, there was actually one point before um, the book was going to get published and I said to the publishers like because it was the last proofread and I said I don't I don't want this to come out this makes me look like an absolute <laughs> maniac <laughs> like don't publish it keep the money I'm not like yeah this is too raw this is too exposed and that was kind of the, one of the main bits of feedback which was really good and a lot of people ask me that question what was it like it's literally you are putting yourself on the table you are literally here i am here's what i think um but then there was also just a moment of embracement and that's something i tied on to the end as well which was very much that the philosophy was we all have these like hidden treasures we all have these words and thoughts and feelings and we keep them hidden away and just yeah and I guess the sliding doors moment was would be you know if I didn't publish it I would just be sitting on all of these all of these yeah beautiful words and and things that people have really embraced and part of that as well yeah with the hidden treasures thing was that I encourage people to to share their poetry with me so at the end of the book I kind of wrote I know you got a story I want to hear it I will find you I'm the Liam Neeson of poetry <laughs> and I, wa I want it I want to see what you got and bless like a few people have got in touch and it's just so amazing to see what other people are experiencing and the way they say things and like you know it's oh it's just it's been beautiful man it's beautiful to see what everyone's got and I've kind of I would encourage anyone to publish um or find a publishers and yeah give it a crack Oh my gosh, I love that. And I actually resonate with that so much because I feel like it's quite similar to um, my creation of Walnut Wednesday as well, because I too am like, try to encourage people to reach out to me and say how they've walnutted and been brave and stuff like that and getting people like you on to, to share these stories because, um, yeah, the more we talk about it, the more we can like collectively celebrate it together as well. So, um, yeah. oh, congrats, friend. I'm just so proud of oh. you. <laughs> That's so cool. I've never really, well, I've had a couple of people who have written books, but not like poetry. And I've always really, I've always really loved words. Um, I lost my train of thought now, but that's okay. Um, now let's talk about filmmaking. How did you get to like where you are? You said 10 years. So how did you get, have you always been sort of like the creative -y kind of kid in school and how did you get to sort of where you are now? So yeah, really interestingly, um, how I got to this point was also what, because what we discussed kind of like, it was a lot of fuckery moments, a lot of fuck you moments. I literally, because I was like, I was an accountant and it seems like another, like uh, uh, just another world, another being that existed. And I remember I just got, I kind of, that it, I kind of just dropped into it. It was like a pit in the ground that I just, I knew a lot of friends in that industry and the family kind of like, you know, kind of pushed me in that direction, even though we're all so creative. Like my family is super, super creative, especially my mum, and it was always interested in film. And then basically I remember seeing a school uh, psychologist or counselor that I was recommended to, cause I'm like, I'm so down. My body was changing. I was like not eating right I just knew my body was just screaming absolutely screaming for change and I remember seeing the, the yeah, school counsellor and I just explained it was like I'm not enjoying this. this isn't who I am I am a creative like fuck this this is shit and I don't know if she was like I don't know having a day of just being more direct but she was just like okay quit and I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, great, great advice. <laughs> Sweet. I quit. And then so I quit my job. I quit my uni. I quit everything. You know, it was a bit of a shock to the family, but I just felt super pumped. And then I was just a madman, absolute madman, seeked every opportunity, every, every post or moment to hold a camera or be creative. I just embraced. There was, there was a few moments, one like in particular where I was just on the train and um I was so broke but I felt like a millionaire like I just felt so rich in what I was doing it did not matter and then blissfully now I actually get paid for it and and can still do it but I it, ta it taught me a lot of lessons which kind of ties into yeah a lot of things I've 
I wish I keep like I wish I should keep on or think about practicing, which is basically just fucking things off when it don't feel right, when your body is screaming for change, just listen to it. God's sake. Like I think we sit with that a lot now. We mm-hmm. sit with it, we contemplate a lot. Like mainly because like I've, I think as you get older and you become an adult you feel so much more responsible you feel so much more like you know what is the right thing the right thing to do rather than the obvious thing to do which is what yeah is is that is is essentially what you feel I remember there was another time where I was uh had a shitty retail job and yeah I got a call being like Etan we need you on this shoot right now are you free and I was literally walking into the shop and the manager clocked me and, she was like, and he was like, hey, it's him. And I was like, yeah, I need to bounce. <laughs> like, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I was like, I'm out of here. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, sorry, man. Like, I just got this gig on, on a shoot. And uh, bless him, he chased me off the shop. And, was, and classic, like, film scenario was like, you'll never work in this town again. And I was <laughs> like, <"Good." laughs> I don't want to work here anyway. <laughs> um... But yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot. There's a lot of what I touched in the book as well about your kind of inner child and your ability to just kind of like go um, go with your instincts and go with your guts. I miss it a lot. Like I'm trying to, but I guess it's about finding a medium between the two, right? Yeah, I think so. And also I think it's like, um it gets so covered up too when you when you're out of practice of doing it and i think that comes from years and years of um conditioning like i'm a recovering people pleaser so i always feel like i should do um so much more and i'm always really tired and exhausted because i'm always just well not so much anymore but i feel like awareness is is the key to it so um good on you for noticing these moments and now you have these like really not cliche but wonderful little movie moments like I'm leaving. <laughs> I quit. And um, now you have that as sort of evidence to keep you going. And I think awareness is the key. You just have to start noticing it. And like you say, um, what were they called again? Fuckery moments where yeah. it just sucks. And you do have to just eat a pile of shit when you're really starting to notice and look into yourself and do the self work, um, which sounds like you've really used a lot of that as a creative outlet as well so do you want to talk a little bit about how you um use creativity to kind of release your inner i don't even know not demons tensions feelings <laughs> just release yeah definitely i mean as a creative you're definitely you're you're just crazy you're just you know you're <laughs> i was thinking i've been thinking about it a lot and i had a really good talk with a friend about it. and the best way i could put it is that you're this vessel like if you just remove your ego and your personality and your not your personality but your your kind of mind from a for a sec and just look at yourself as a vessel this thing that receives and then kind of releases like the way you interpret the world just kind of i think letting it flow and the best way i can think of being a creative is kind of being like a i can just only describe it as like abseiling into the abyss and sometimes you get lost so you strap the rope you'll see it you're like all right i really want to find out about this thing and you're like going down it and you just kind of have to you kind of have to embrace it and sometimes you get lost sometimes you don't know what you're doing you don't know what you're going and the the route isn't very clear um but I think it's just all about pursuing. And I think editing has also taught me a lot. Um, me and Kate talk about this a lot. Um, and also my housemate mentions, I think. I was talking to her and she, and, she met, and she said something like, I'm really, this. I don't understand this version of myself. And as an editor, I'll try not to be technical. But versioning is an like editing term where, so when you're first constructing a story, right? You can, and we call it a V1, a version one. Uh, this is what I see going on and then when you go to do your revisions of that you always duplicate it so then you have your version two Mm -hmm. long story short you've got your version three four five six whatever right but you always got those versions and then what you do in editing is you go okay well I'm on version five now but I tell you what I really like that bit from version one and version two and version three and you can kind of like what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to get is that you never the, the version of yourself right now is just what you are up to this point those other versions still exist 
and it is you can be multiple things you don't have to be one thing mm. and I was I just thought that was a really interesting concept I don't know why I brought it to editing and filmmaking but that's because of the word version it made me think of that and what we also say in editing as well is that I can't make a, a, a red velvet cake if you give me bacon it's kind of <laughs> like <laughs> you know, yeah definitely yeah you know what I mean like editing is very much at the point where we get the footage from the camera people and we and they go okay make this now and I go and in, in some cases you're like well this doesn't hit the brief this isn't what we're trying to achieve here you've given me the, the, the ingredients aren't right mm, yeah so therefore you're not going to get the result you want we try to fix it and get close to it but yeah if you give me bacon you're going to get like a bacon sandwich you're not going to get a red velvet you know um yeah. so it's very much like that kind of way of thinking like and it's a good way of thinking of life like and I know we touched on kind of um we were going to mention about decisions matching your desire and it's very much that concept of are you having have you got the right ingredients to go in the direction you want like are you preaching it enough like what do you want and what are you doing about it to kind of get to that point do you know what I mean? Yeah, I love that. And I think you've actually like just touched on a very like woo-woo term, which they call like the quantum field, which is like how I've actually visualized your versions. So yeah. um yeah, it's a really, really good metaphor for um for way of being and way of sculpting yourself. So are you in the version now acting um as the version that you like want to be, which could be like freaking five ten down the line yeah. and taking the bits of old versions and bringing them into the new ones as well so i mm -hmm. think that's really i'm um, thank you so much for sharing that i think that was a really beautiful like visual um let's talk a little bit more go go deeper into that desire stuff tell me how um you how do you make your decisions when it comes to wanting to do things mm. um yeah, good question. I think it ties into a lot about the bravery thing. I think, again, being an adult and feeling responsible, and I think, I don't know about, um, I can only speak for myself, but I think a lot of people feel this way. It's very much like it always feels like you're wanting the best now or the fall is so much greater. When you fall now, it seems like the fall hurts a lot more or there's a pressure not to fall or not to fail. Yeah. So... I think in terms of the decisions, it is very much being brave, still remembering that God, that for the rest of our lives, we'll, you know, you're never going to stop fucking up. Like really, like I, as much as, you know, that story I told you about kind of getting into editing and me basically flipping the world off, like, <laughs> but I also messed up a lot, but I never took it to heart. And I always kind of stayed true to, to what I was pursuing, but, it's very much like now I'm very much in a situation where, you know, now that I'm, I guess, an established editor, I'm kind of looking for those next steps. But now I just feel a lot more weight into being brave. And I think you touched on that and you mentioned that a lot in terms of like, it's not even one big thing. It's just little things because you don't want to be derailed. And, and that's when you feel really shitty when your instincts told you what you should be doing and you, didn't do it for some reason you know and I was thinking of this interest interesting concept as well with like because um you know in terms of like the walnut and the breaking like I don't know if you know about like how lobsters grow <laughs> <laughs> right. lobster last night for dinner actually no I'm joking <laughs> um but yeah like it basically like it hurts them to grow like they actually have to get the point in which they they know they have to grow is when it hurts so it's kind of interpreting that hurt for your growth and again when you're a kid you always have like growing pains like growing up don't you like but when you're an adult or in your 30s or whatever like the pains I get I call them mental pains so I'm trying to like interpret those mental pains as, although like they are you know you can categorize them into anxiety and some other things but I always try and go all right this kind of hurts, but let me let me deal with it. Let me address it head on. And it's almost it's some, what I'm trying to say is almost like a signal, isn't it? Like yeah. you haven't encountered this before. You haven't dealt with this before. Like you're doing so much at the moment. 
you're just venturing into a whole lot of thing and you know like you said you don't know what the result is but you're doing it anyway and I guess enjoying the journey is is a big part of it because it's not just about the outcome right Mm. yeah and I also think sometimes um in terms of like fear and like the growing pains as you say it's the anticipation of the outcome that stops us from doing the things so like Mm. if we go back to your example and you're like I quit I'm leaving suckers um those big bold movie moments are really great when we do them but also um there could have been so many things and so many thoughts that had stopped you from doing that as well so Mm. if you peel it right back to the day-to-day where um you know you like one of my examples from a podcast very very early on was I was sitting in like a group setting and I had to ask this girl for a pen and I was shitting one I was just like dying because I didn't want to bother her I didn't want her to think ew why didn't you bring a pen you're at this woo -woo retreat and you didn't bring a bloody pen (laughs) I was thinking oh my god and what if that pen doesn't work and then I have to get another pen and so like all these things and um yeah so the anticipation of of things can be more overwhelming than actually doing the thing itself and that's what um how we talked about earlier like just practicing that that muscle of just doing it step by step to yeah get to where you end up going yeah. if that and just sense. to touch on that a little bit as well was like what just kind of popped into my head is always i try to i always got this knack of thinking of sliding doors effects mm-hmm. so always being like you know even with your pen you can use it like like well if you didn't ask for a pen you're not going to write any. <laughs> you're going to like. You're not going to be able to write anything, right? But yeah. If you ask for the pen, then you can accomplish what you need to accomplish. And you know, even if she does, imagine if she flipped out and was like, "How dare you?" <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you still went for it. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's one of those. So I always think sliding doors affects, and it's always beautiful as well. Because when I think again, my journey into filmmaking it was just a relentlessness. It was just kind of like, I am going to talk to this person. I am going like, like there was only one door. There wasn't a sliding doors. It was always one door for me. That, that moment when I walked out of that shop was honestly did not second guess for a moment. I was on the phone staring him dead in the eye with a smile on my face about to just bounce. Bless him as well. I was like, no, I'm not, I won't find out and say, find him and say, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) um but sliding doors is always i always think of that analogy as well if you do if you don't do it like you're what's gonna happen do you know what i mean if you do do it what's the worst that could happen and ultimately i guess the even the moral of that film is that you always end up in the point that you you're gonna end up but one might be a bit more of a be be, be, be a bit more of a, a rough route and it's also a good great way of looking at that version of yourself as well like when you actually look at who you are and go and sometimes you can go deep in thought like I, this is a lot what happened with the poetry when you're abseiling into your abyss is that you think oh what if i did that what if i did this like oh i'm really sorry about that oh like you know and unless unless you like invent time travel you're just it's it's a complete waste of time, but we still do it. I still do it. I'm so bad at that. And, um, but then you just look at yourself now and you think, but did I not ask for this? Did I not want this? Like again, deep down that version, you right now sitting there, is that not what you wanted? Cause I probably bet it was as much as you think it was. And I, I would put money on it being that way. Cause you did make those decisions and that was, and that was you. So it's always something to think about as well. I think, oh God, if I stuck with this person or didn't do that, would I have the book now? Would I have a short film now? Would I, would I be in this place? Like, you know, or what could be the other? I could also be like, I don't know, in a ditch. Yeah. <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? Just <laughs> you just never different. know. Yeah, totally. I think it does come down to um, the the decisions that we make every every moment consciously or subconsciously we have a choice right we you Mm. you decide you decide if you want to walnut and be brave or you decide if you want to sit in in your sorrow for a little bit and look sometimes that's fine sometimes you just actually just need to bask and wallow and feel a bit sorry for yourself for a little while but then you decide to get up and brush your teeth or whatever you know (laughs) retreat is also just as effective as as reacting like um I, yeah, I've learned 
I used to be, you know, I used to be very much like the attacker, like very much going for everything. But now I've really enjoyed, yeah, the, the relieving myself of that pressure because that could be very exhausting as well. I remember I used to burn out a lot, like being so reactive to everything. So it is very much good to, yeah, put yourself under the covers, have a think and just, just, yeah, chilling is, is key. And I think, yeah, this lockdown is... <laughs> it's probably taught everyone how to chill for a bit or, or be with be in their own kind of company. Yeah, it was definitely a forced a forced sense of real relaxing. And I think after the initial shock of cabin fever and all the things, I think people did learn ways to embrace rest in a mm-hmm. healthy way where possible. I mean, obviously being stuck in a house all day every day isn't also isn't the best either. But um yeah, I'm also with you on that journey of just kind of leaning back a little bit more too I've kind of been a little bit of like a hustler for so long for stuff that didn't I didn't enjoy and now when I'm when I'm resting I just like have learned to embrace it and love it and I feel like a I don't feel like a slob I feel like yeah I deserve it because I just have been working really hard on stuff I like (laughs) stuff I want to do rather than um eating everybody else's shit so yeah um it and what does being a walnut mean to you? Um, being a walnut, not to be cliche and repeat anyone else's answer, but it is being brave. It is, for me, it's breaking. It always kind of resembles a brain to me. A walnut is actually one of my favourite nuts. We're going to be playing a lot <laughs> for Christmas. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like, it's, for me, it's always seemed like this metaphor of looking into your brain, looking like, seeing what's going on but in order to see what's going on you need to break you need to see what's inside and that's what i see it being to me i love that that is so beautiful and um thank you for your awareness too i think also like we haven't had you're the second male that we've had on the podcast i think it's also I think it's also very refreshing um, to have that from a guy's perspective too, because there is um, not to be sexist, but there is that kind of that boys can't cry kind of thing in Mm. society and life. So um, I just want to honor you and thank you so much for sharing so deeply um, some of your stories and your passions. Um, It's been really nice having you, but just before we wrap up, is there anything that you, um, want to say to any of the walnuts or that you think we haven't covered that you want to touch on a little bit more or anything like that um i think the only thing i'd want to say is definitely to just on the note of uh encouraging yourself to express finding finding your way of expressing like i've i've like forced not i haven't haven't put guns in anyone's head and said write poetry but i've kind of (laughs) i've kind of encouraged a lot of people to write and just give it a crack it seems like you know it is going to be uh you know quite a nervous experience um but just find your vessel find your avenue i really encourage it it's it's something like that's becoming a lot more shared recently um which is really good to see but then um yeah i think it's just been such a good avenue for me and i think just just write just write and share and honestly like you're doing I said to you like you're doing such a good job of of encouraging and I think the more you got behind you and the more you encourage it is just it's just a beautiful thing it just has to be said like you know it has to be spoken it can't be this unlike spoken language anymore like it's it's affecting a lot of people like the more people that have submitted stuff to me like I've seen trauma be quite good that was my kind of activation as well like once you once I experienced a lot of trauma like I that was probably when it all started as well um so yeah just remember that you know you can express yourself creatively um just just yeah I would just encourage it there was a really good scenario where I actually eavesdropped on this person on the train and she was writing such beautiful things. I do it all the time. It's really bad. <laughs> and she was writing some beautiful things and I was just like, I was, and I was like, oh, that's really good. And she like hit her phone and she was like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, yeah, don't do that. Don't, eavesdrop. Yeah. don't eavesdrop. Just, yeah. 
Oh, very nice. Um, no, yeah, I agree. And also if you um, don't feel like you are a creative person, I, I believe that everyone has a little bit of creative up their butthole but um if you don't feel that way there is so many other ways that you can um walnut and things like that like even just going to the gym going for a walk telling someone you love them who you haven't actually said out loud in like 50 hundred years something like that there's so many other ways to uh express but yeah i agree with the writing thing i think it's quite a beautiful way to i think in in a world where now now I'm like we're wrapping up and now I'm going on another tangent again. Um, but I think in a world where everything is so fast paced and we're always go 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 and doing things all the time, sometimes you forget that you have words and you have a voice. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I I like that idea of just giving it a go and putting pen to paper or typing or however you feel like it. But just like remembering that you have you have words and a voice. I think it's really important. So thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> oh no thank you for having me on honestly it's, it's been so good so so um, good and where can people find you if they want to snoop you and stalk your stuff and have a look at your poetry i don't think it's the physical book is for sale um in new zealand but you can buy it on kindle is that right or e, e -book? anyway you, you yeah can tell us. yeah um if you want to follow me you can follow me at eta um or there's for the covers instagram is also the cover is placed um and yeah the book is also available on amazon which you can get on kindle and i'll speak to my publishers about getting it over to new zealand because yeah you guys deserve it and you guys rock so yes, please i said to kate <laughs> i was like order me one i'll get it when i come over it's my turn yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> right, you gotta come over that would be okay Yes, I will. It, it, it definitely is my turn. But um, Etam, I feel like I could talk to you forever. So when um, we are ever in the same city, we will definitely catch up for a vino or five. Um, yep. But thank you so much for being here and for sharing your words and your voice. We really appreciate it. And I'll share all your stuff in the in the show notes. And um, last week's episode um, will have your film that you and Kate were a part of in there but i'll post it in this week's one as well um and walnut thank you for listening and for your time and for being here and let us know um what you thought of it if you have any feelings or words that you want to share with us um but yeah atom friend thank you so much i really appreciate you you're beautiful and lovely and yeah it's been a really really wonderful chat oh stop oh thank <laughs> you so much that is a bit wicked appreciate it bye everyone <laughs> Thank you.